Hey there, how's it going? Good? Good. Anyway, you want to learn a bit about South American history? Okay, sure. I'll start. In the last episode, I talked about how people arrived in South America and then spread across the continent, and developed from hunter-gatherers to agrarian societies using agriculture. If you would like to see that video, then it will be linked in the description of this video and will probably be in a card to the top of the video. Now, in this video, we'll be watching as some notable cultures and civilizations develop and appear across the continent. So while in my previous video I ended at around 2000 BCE, we're going to have to go some ways back, because we're going to look at a new civilization, not a cheap Many people will probably have at least heard of Nordachiko, as it's believed to be one of the oldest civilizations in the world. The first city within the Nordachiko civilization is thought to be Hurikanga, which is believed to have existed around 3500 BCE making it the oldest known city in the Americas, and one of the oldest known cities in the world. The city was located on South America's Pacific coast, in modern-day Peru, as pictured here. Around 3100 BCE, large-scale human settlements became apparent in the Nordachico areas. The Nordachico civilization arose along three rivers, the Fortaleza River, the Pativilca River, and the Supe River. These created river valleys, which is a very popular real estate for ancient civilizations, I've heard. These rivers may have been very important to the Norte Chico people, as it's believed that a large portion of their diet was made of fish. It is hard to study this civilization, as they had no writing system, nor did they have much visual art through which we might study their culture. Something that we do have, however, is many architectural sites, as the Norichiko people made very impressive architecture. The civilization had many cities and urban sites, which show signs of communal living, indicating a large force of at least semi-unified people who assembled the constructions. The civilization is very impressive, showing that when people think about ancient civilizations such as Egypt, China, and others, Norichiko should also be thought about and remembered. Now, I'm not going to talk incredibly in-depth about the civilization of Norichiko, however. If you'd like to learn more about them, then I recommend you do so, as there are many interesting things to do with the Norichiko civilization. So something interesting about this civilization is its religion. We don't know anything about the religion of the Norichiko civilization, but we have found certain common symbols, which are believed to be god symbols, representing the people's beliefs in some way. Some of those symbols recur in other South American civilizations, leading many historians to believe that the religion of the Norichiko people would evolve into many other religions that spread across the continent. Now, before I move on to other histories across the continent, I want to talk about the government and organization of the Norichiko civilization. Now, the degree of centralized authority is hard to tell, but it is believed by many that the many chiefdoms of the Norichiko civilization were governed theocratically. This means that it was believed by the people that a divine deity or supernatural force of some sort was the ruling authority, and that the leaders who governed the lands were guided by that supreme authority. The economy of Norichiko was likely very simple, and was just a trading civilization which utilized bartering. Something interesting about the Norichiko civilization is that there are no signs of any warfare, unlike many other early civilizations. The Norichiko civilization appears to have ended around 1800 BCE, after a period of decline. But that is all I'm going to talk about in regards to Norichiko, at least for now. And again, I'd recommend that you do further research on the topic if you're interested. So moving on to other things, I feel like I should mention the Amazon River and rainforest. In the previous episode of this series, I said that there weren't many people living within the Amazon area, but that wasn't entirely true. There were quite a few people who were thought to have lived in the Amazon rainforest. The main difference between the Amazon and other parts of South America, such as the Andean area, is that large unified states did not occur nearly as often, so it is often overlooked and ignored. However, it is believed by many that somewhere around 5 million people lived in the rainforest in the year 1500 CE. And yes, I said CE, so that is still quite a way away, but it still gets to the point that many people lived in the Amazon. We also think of the Amazon rainforest as a pristine wilderness, or at least we used to, but it appears as though the wilderness may have been changed and influenced by humans for thousands of years, with glyphs having been found in deforested part of the Amazon. Remember when I said pristine? Alright, now that I've talked about the Amazonian area, I'm going to move on to the rest of the continent. I'm going to do this by talking about the new civilizations and going through them quickly, just mentioning the most important things. These civilizations could all be given more detail for certain, but I'd like to go through this series quicker. So here we go, rapid fire South American early civilizations time. The Canary. They were a South American native civilization that existed in the modern day Ecuadorian provinces of Canar and Azuay. Their civilization had advanced architecture and an elaborate religious belief, which included a creation myth which involved a massive flood nearly wiping out all of humanity. This is, as I'm sure you can tell, very similar to the story of Noah's Ark in the Bible. Unfortunately, the Canary were conquered first by the Inca Empire and then by the Spanish, 
and this combination of conquests resulted in many of their remains being burned or destroyed, so not very much is known about these people. However, the descendants of the Canary civilization still are around, and their culture is still in existence, which is cool. There is also a group of civilizations called the Chibchan Nations, which were communities across South America that were united through their speaking of Chibcha languages. They were the most socio-economically developed of all pre-Hispanic Colombian cultures. The Chibchan Nations did extend outside of South America into Central America, but we don't need to talk about that. The Chibchan nations were split into two different linguistic subgroups, with the Arawako Chimila languages and the Kuna Colombian languages. Of these two linguistic subgroups, there were many different types of people who spoke variants of the languages. Again, there are many different types of peoples, and I'm just going to talk about one of them. The Mwiska peoples were the most advanced of these Chibchan nations, and they formed the Mwiska Confederation, a loose confederation consisting of Muisca rulers in what is now modern-day Colombia. The Muisca confederation first came into existence around the year 1450 CE. They had a complex religious system and made golden relics dedicated to the deities whom they worshipped. The Muisca confederation was so great that they were even included in the list of the four great civilizations of the Americas, which consisted of the Aztec, Maya, and Inca civilizations, along with, of course, the Muisca civilization. The civilization worked somewhat like this. The lands inhabited by the Muisca people were ruled over by several different leaders. These leaders would be somewhat organized together, in that they could fight wars together, but weren't as unified as a modern-day nation like France or Japan. The multiple territories that made up the Muisca Confederation were as follows. Bacata, whose capital was the aptly named Bacata. Fun fact, the city of Bacata is now the modern-day city of Bogota, which is the current capital of Colombia. Bacata was ruled by one or more Zipas, who were sort of like kings. There was also the territory of Hunza, whose capital was another aptly named city, the city of Hunza. The Hunza territory was ruled by one or more Zaques, who again were sort of like kings. Another territory was the territory of Iraka, whose capital was Suamax. The territory was ruled by an Iraka, who was like a king and also a religious figure in the Muisca religion. There were some other smaller territories with different government types, so just remember that. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the Muisca Confederation was cool, and a very advanced civilization. The Muisca Confederation would ultimately be defeated by the Spanish once they arrived in the area, starting with their conquest in 1537. Their legacy continues today, as there are still modern-day Muiscas who celebrate their culture and their heritage. Okay, so next, we'll be looking over to the Andes. Those mountains were sort of the centerpiece of the South American civilizations, so many incredible civilizations came out of that most unlikely area. I mean, the mountains were inhospitable and you would never want to live there, right? Well, clearly, some people did want to live there, as there were a variety of different types of peoples who lived there for thousands of years. For example, in around the year 900 BCE, the Chavin civilization appeared, who did not have a literacy system, but established a complex trade network alongside an advanced agricultural system. They would build a site called Chavin de Huanta in what is modern-day Peru, which was built at an elevation of 3,177 meters, or 10,423 feet. I mean, I get that it makes you look cool to say that you live on a mountain, but it's like, why? You do know that there's some perfectly nice flat land elsewhere, right? Okay, anyways, who were the Moche? Well, I'm not entirely sure why I asked that, as I'm the one who is supposed to tell you the answer, but let's just ignore that. So the Moche were an Andean civilization that began around the 1st century CE. They were a fairly technologically advanced people, who traded with many faraway peoples such as the Maya. One interesting thing about them is the fact that they carved pottery to depict their daily lives, as opposed to legendary heroes or epic kings. So we have a unique insight into those people's day-to-day -day lives. Alright, I'm going to get to the group most people think of when they think about South American civilizations, the Inca. The Inca were an incredibly impressive empire, at their height reaching a size half that of the Roman Empire at their respective height, and it was around the same size as Mexico today. The empire was very untraditional in comparison with Western empires, and was organized very uniquely. The Inca Empire has been pointed to as both an example of a communist utopia and a 1984-esque fascist dictatorship. I'll not weigh in on this debate, though I will give information as to how the Inca Empire was organized, and the daily lives of its inhabitants. Over the next three episodes of this series, I will explore the fascinating history of the Inca Empire, and I will examine more than just its conquest and borders, but also how the people within the empire themselves lived. I have, throughout the two previous episodes of this series, had to contend with the many difficult choices which arise when telling the history of an entire continent. 
namely the choices as to what histories I include. I could have easily talked about the Norashiko civilization for this entire episode, though I did not because I wished to speed up this series somewhat. I now have to decide how much I will talk about the Inca civilization, and I decided that three episodes, which explain the early Inca Empire, the organization of the Inca Empire, and how its people lived, and the late Inca Empire along with its fall to the Spanish was enough. This channel is not intended to give all the information about a topic necessarily, but rather its purpose is to introduce one to a topic, summarize it, and then let people explore the topic further if they wish to. I mean, it's in my channel's about section. So to summarize what I have just said, I will go over solely the Ink Empire throughout the next three episodes in this series, and that will then lead me into the European arrival in the Americas. Also, do not expect me to provide an incredibly in-depth analysis of the Empire, worthy of being turned into a documentary, because again, it will just be a summary. Alright, so that brings me to the end of this video. The next three in this series will be devoted entirely to the history of the Inca Empire. With that said, I would like to say thank you for watching, and have a good day.